Welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you, welcoming Sarah Farron from Faith Family Church to uh, our community today. And not your first go round, not your first rodeo, is it, Sarah? You've been here many times before talking about Serve Day. That's and right. well, all of all the really cool things that Faith Family gets involved with, but Serve Day in particular because it does take you out into our community. So, tell us a little bit about the background first. Let's talk about what this is and why you do it. Sure, Serve Day. First of all, thanks for for having me on, Susie. It's always great to spend some time with you. Um, serve Day is really a way for um, us to simply love and serve our community. Um, it's a way for us to mobilize the, the folks that call Faith Family home um, and just allow them the opportunity to touch the vision and the mission of local organizations in our community, kind of get a, um, a pulse of what's happening in our community um, and, and be able to serve the mission of local nonprofits, even local schools and organizations that are truly in the trenches every day, making our community such a great place to live. Why is that important for a church to do something like that? Uh, I mean, from our perspective, um, it's it's great to be able to serve where you live and to really be a, a contribute to the community. Like I said, so many nonprofits, they are the reason our community is so great. They're providing mm-hmm. services and um, and opportunities for people in our community. Many of the people that go to our church um, have experienced the benefits of the nonprofits and different organizations Mm. in our community that are working so hard. And so I think it's just a great way for us as a church to say, you know what, we live here, we love our community, and we love you, and we want to be a part of of what you're doing. So many churches, though, Sarah, are I think as a church family, you get very involved by no fault of our own family, church families get involved in their own church business. So it seems a little trickier to get out into the community and help someone else in their mission. Uh, How do you do that? Um, You know, I think one of the things we found is that what we do really well as a church is we do church. Uh, we we are good at, at being being the church and, and having a great worship experience where people can encounter God's presence. They can learn. They can grow. They can connect uh, with friends and family and, and meet some folks. Um, and so we want to stay in our lane in a sense and do that. Let us do church um, and let the people who do the other services, provide other social services and, and serve our community in other ways, let them stay in their lane and do what mm-hmm. they do and as a church, um, our goal is just simply to come alongside them and say, how can we help and be a support um, as you do what you do? When you're talking about manpower, you're not talking about a little tiny number. This is really kind of amazing. How many people are we talking about here? Uh, Last year, we were able to mobilize 750 people on one day. Uh, we served at 33 different locations across three counties. Um, and so that's, um, that's, you know, one of the ways that we feel like we can make an impact. That's one of the assets we have as a church is, is people. And if we can mobilize those people to help and to serve, um, that's what we want to do. It's pretty amazing. Doing what? What kinds of serving were these 700 plus people doing in three different counties? Yeah, you name it. And they probably did it. They uh, there was painting. There was, you know, different cleanup projects in the parks and trails and um, all all kinds of things. Landscaping. They worked at some local schools and helped get uh, ready for the new school year. Um, Really, um, if you can name it, they probably did it. I can't imagine the logistics of organizing something like that. Whenever you're working with volunteers, it's always fun, yeah. but there are challenges. Yes. Um, are you the gal behind the putting it all together, that spreadsheet? Uh, <laughs> that spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, we have, you know what, we have a great team. Uh, mm-hmm. We have some really great leaders. Um, we empower our volunteer leaders and they own the projects that they're, um, you know, assigned to. And, and it takes a team to do something like that. I certainly can't take the credit for that. Um, we I have a team and that's who I lean on and depend on. And they bring ideas, they bring energy, um, they bring their skills, and um, and that's how we get it done. Mm-hmm. Your position at Faith Family is what? I'm the outreach director. So what does that entail other than this enormous serve day. Yeah, so serve day falls under that. I also oversee some different local initiatives that we do with some some different partners in the community. Um, uh, it includes our missions, which uh, we send several teams every year overseas doing some mission trips. Um, and then a huge focus for us as a church um, is prison ministry. We have kind of a unique model of prison ministry where we've actually 
planted our church campus inside correctional facilities all across Northeast Ohio. And so that sort of falls under my umbrella of outreach as well. That's amazing. I want to park there for just a minute. Sure. Um, it is amazing what's happening there. You're in now how many prisons? Uh, we're in nine different facilities uh, right now, nine different campuses. So mm-hmm. it's about six or seven facilities, but we have nine campuses. Some of the facilities maybe have a men's division and a women's division. So we have nine church campuses running. So what that looks like essentially is one day a week, um, we take a video-driven church um, service into into the um, facility. We have a team of volunteers from Faith Family that go, and um, they're wearing the same volunteer t-shirts that our volunteers wear at mm-hmm. our main campus. Um, they get the, the inmates receive the same handouts um, mm-hmm. that our church members receive, and they get to experience the same uh, worship and the same uh, message, just like um, they, they were attending our main campus. Um, and then we have another team that goes back to that same facility later in the week, and they facilitate some small group opportunities with the mm. inmates opportunities for character development and um, just to go a little deeper uh, with their faith. Well, I know it's always amazing every week uh, to see how many people, how many lives are changed uh, at the end of a service. But when you think, wow, this is also happening in nine different correctional facilities as well, what kind of I don't want to say numbers, but I'll say numbers. <laughs> what kind of numbers do you get back from those um correctional facilities as far as people who have completely turned their lives around because they've met Jesus. Yeah, so those numbers um that you know they fluctuate from week to week but um they're they, those numbers are for us they're significant. Um every person matters. Mm-hmm. Um it, it, last year we were able to minister to a uh, just under 20,000 inmates wow. um, across the different uh, prison and jail ministries that we do. Um, and so for us just to be able to touch that many people who are incarcerated um, is such a blessing, such a privilege, mm-hmm. um, because we know that each one of those uh, individuals also represents probably a family or yes. a network of loved ones. Um, and we do receive stories and, and hear some um, feedback from, you know, maybe an inmate begins attending one of our prison campuses. Um, they start talking to their family about that. Um, their family gets curious and they begin coming to wow. faith family mm-hmm. um, on the quote unquote on the outside. Mm-hmm. Um, and now a family and inmate, um, they have some some really positive things to talk about together um, and they're able to sort of experience the, that faith walk um, together in maybe a really unconventional setting. Um, but it's been it's been a really beautiful thing for us to be able to not only reach inmates, but also reach um, their families. And in the the same token that the fact that um, they are seeing the and they're experiencing the exact same worship experience. So afterwards, they can get together and talk about the same day, the same message, the right. same music. Yes. They're they're able to really share in that, even though they might not be in the same physical location. Exactly, and and the thing that's even kind of unique is they'll hear. You know, we we share some announcements on the weekends, different events that are coming up, and um, the inmates they get to experience all of that. So sometimes they'll call their family and say, "Hey, there's a youth event happening at this church that you know I'm attending," and and their kids will come uh, to the youth event, or there's a women's event happening, and maybe their wife uh, would like to come, or something like that. So though even those. Um, connections for some of the the inmates who are more local is has been really powerful is there anything done for people as they're getting ready to transition out so they've served their time and they're ready to transition out uh, and find a church then hopefully they probably just feel very well at home Mm -hmm. at faith family but is there some help for um, some of the inmates in that yeah, you know, we t- as a church, we're sort of navigating that as well, mm-hmm. um, that side of uh, reentry and partnering well with, with some of the organizations. There's an organization here uh, locally called Men's Challenge that's doing some really powerful things to help uh, guys get, you know, um, sort of back on track and, and do mm-hmm. what they need to do. And so as a church, again, we're trying to partner with the people who are uh, doing that reentry side. Um but yes, we've definitely found that a lot of folks come, they, when they come out, they, they come to Faith Family and feel very much at home. Yes. Uh, something really interesting um, is particularly at, at one of our juvenile facilities. I remember asking some of the young 
guys that were in that facility if they'd ever attended a local church before. Um, grandma with mom with with somebody um, and overwhelming majority that I talked to just said no and it, it kind of not sh- ever it, it shocked me yeah. yeah it shocked me that they'd never had a church experience now I didn't do a scientific study but I just just from my own personal conversations mm-hmm. um, and so it really for me that just is what pushed me over the edge to say we have to do this um, to give them the opportunity to see what it feels like to be part of a local church to be part to belong to a local body um, and so when they get released and we say, hey, come visit us or come to church or whatever it might be, they know what they're looking for. They've, mm-hmm. they've experienced what it's like to be part of a local church. For us, that, that feels like a really valuable experience to give. Do they get an, an idea of how not to just be an audience member, but to be a member of that body, that church body, and maybe even do some volunteering? They do. Uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Uh, we have a lot of inmates that will serve um, – at those uh, campus experiences, they'll hand out the, you know, the, the flyers Neat. or um, help set up the chairs or tear down or run the soundboard, those kinds of things. And so it really gives them an opportunity to connect mm-hmm. and to feel like um, it's their part of, of, of what we're doing as well. Yeah. I didn't want to make you park on one little area for too long, but it is amazing what you're doing in that. Jill Sullivan was here not long yeah. ago and talking about reentry mm-hmm. as being the biggest challenge and yes. that that's what you're really looking at now and really yeah. help people. People, um, because when you think about it, you're you're having to break up with your whole old support system, yeah, and make new friends and lead your families in a new way completely. Exactly, and it's it really is starting out as a little baby, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of challenges, um, but we've we've also seen a lot of people, um, very strong people, coming out of. Uh, and a situation where they were incarcerated and and making some good decisions, mm-hmm. and so um, that makes us that makes us smile. We're very really happy about absolutely, that. very very <laughs> cool. So I'm going to guess that helping some way with the prison ministry is one of the things available on Serve Day. Yes. What do you do in that area? Uh, one of the things we do every year is we invite folks to help us um, put together hygiene kits um, for they assemble hygiene kits for inmates, and uh, a lot of times. People don't realize that inmates have to uh, supply their own hygiene um, supplies, shampoo, soap, toothpaste. That's not all there for them. You're not checking into a hotel. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And and so if they don't have someone uh, on the outside who's maybe helping with, with that um, or a way to have some money on their books so they could buy that, um, they're uh, really in trouble. And so just as a church, we... Um, like to just practice generosity. <laughs> we mm-hmm. give towards that. Um, there's a lot of uh, great folks that, that give towards that and help us to, to purchase those supplies. And then we have a whole crew of volunteers on serve day that comes together and assembles those uh, kits for them. And then we take um, those packs later and, and deliver those and just personally hand deliver them to the inmates and just let them know uh, God loves them. We love them. They matter to us. They matter to God. And uh, we just want to be a blessing to them. Response when they receive something like that. That, yeah. that might be their very first experience with church as they're in the in prison. Totally. Uh, we, we've had some guys who've delivered them uh, come back and share stories of how um, grown men <laughs> receive those packets and begin crying. Um, there's there's stories really? of, of men who said, you, you're not going to believe this. I was just praying and asking God <gasps> to somehow provide so that I could get the, the hygiene materials I needed. And you guys walked in. And um, so it, it's, a, it's a way, maybe a non-conventional way for people to encounter God, but they're encountering him through something as simple as a hygiene kit. We just never know, do we? It's true. You just have absolutely no idea what small little thing could have an amazing ripple effect like that. So true. What a privilege yes. to be Jesus's hands and feet in in such an area where people are maybe have hit the lowest point of their lives. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it, it really it really is, and I think our our prison teams see it that way. It's a privilege to be able to go into those facilities. Um, and one of the things we always say is that we bring light into dark places, and someone might be in the darkest place of their life, um, but we have the opportunity to go in and be light, mm. um, bring that into a dark place um, in someone's life. It's a good stopping place. We are visiting with Sarah Farron from Faith Family, getting ready for Serve Day. We'll have lots more after these words. You're listening to Our Community.